So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of a summary. Um, and the summary is going to start off with some down points about the current situation with the high streets and then some positive um, aspects of the same situation. And then I'd like us to get into a conversation of how we can look at the negative points and try and turn them into positive points. So the first uh, um, negative point is about the trends. And if you have a look at the board on the left hand side, you'll actually see that there's a box in there, in there and it outlines all of the trends. Um, and later on, we will have a discussion about this, but you'll see that most of those trends are either to do with IT or online. So the first thing that comes to mind is how can we help the high street when this is the trend that is going on in the marketplace? Now, the second thing that I'd like to bring up is current footfall. Um, because of people working from home, the current footfall for local high streets is only around 17% down on what it was pre-COVID. So there seems to be quite a lot of activity around the local high street. However, the city, the town and city high streets are 35% down on what it was just before COVID. Um, so in a similar time of year, uh, two years ago, we are over 35% down on the footfall for the high street. How do we get that to change? Um, and then, of course, while everybody has been at home, um, online sales have boomed. Um, and so is it possible to actually turn that around to stop being an online boom? Or do we have to try and see how we can make the high street to come to terms with that and um, be able to become successful again? Then one of the other downsides to think about is that all local authorities have got to put 15 year plans together. Um, so can you imagine if um, a local authority has put a 15 year plan together, maybe two years before the pandemic started? That means they still got 12 years of that plan in place to get through uh, even though um, it is harming the community and harming the, the finance for that local authority before they can put the changes in place. How can we master that or how can we get over that? And then the last one to think about with regard to a, a negative aspect is because of the, of the pandemic, are people frightened of um, going into the high street with health and safety restrictions um, and the social distancing, um, even though uh, these rules and regulations are now uh, not as stringent as they were, is this still something that they need to think about? So that's one side of the argument. Um, so if you can think of ways that those can be approached and overcome to help the high street, then there is also a, a positive side. Consumers, as a result of the pandemic, have a lot more money to spend. Now, at the moment, they're spending that money online. How can we change that aspect and get them to come along to the high streets? Since April, um, all research shows that footfall is going up week on week. Even though we're at minus 34%, it is still going up week on week. Um, and... Um, Savills, who record year on year um, about the uptick of new lettings in the high street, um, have said that 2021 uptick is 30%. So who is, let, is, who is paying for these lettings? What ideas have they got for whatever that they have uh, decided to, to let uh, or to uh, purchase or rent? And what ideas have they got for the high street that we may not know about? So Association of Town and City Management do case studies on different towns and cities in the UK. Um, and I've had a look at what they've come up with for Twickenham and Coventry and Hammersmith and Morpeth. And there are lots of ideas of how we can uh, improve the high street. So <clears throat> I'm wondering what ideas that you may have, having listened to that summary, what can we do 
to improve the lot of the high street uh, moving forward. So what are we doing? Who goes to the high street? So if we mix it up between uh, older, more retired people, perhaps adults and younger adults, I think part the key thing is to use culture as an opportunity to get people back into the high street. So alongside the retail stores, it's an opportunity for cultural organisations that have often been marginalised and have found it difficult to get into the high street. Um, you know, a lack of funding, um, not loads of money all the time, uh, can actually take this as an opportunity to work alongside um, businesses so that they bring people into the high street because young adults want to come and do, I don't know, might want to hang out in cafes or mm -hmm. uh, listen to music or gather at festival type things, or it could be pop up, small pop up festivals. Um, there's an opportunity for artists, performing artists to work together alongside organizations. And these things can become entwined with businesses that they work in collaboration to make a rich and vibrant uh, landscape that people want to come and visit. I think we have got to change to a cultural type um, way of, of living. Uh, the thing about town centres always there are hooks and there are complementary services. Now the hooks and the complementary services um, have always been for um, maybe the older generation. Uh, for example, I was talking earlier on about going to the marketplace in Preston today and mm. you, know, you don't see young people in the marketplaces anymore. But um, one thing that Preston have done in order to try and counter all of this and um, it, it was very, they had great foresight in doing that, is that Preston have uh, changed a lot of the town centre into um, accommodation for students, for UCLan. Mm. Um, and so you will always see a lot of young people in the town centre. So that is an idea that, um, you know, might be utilised by university towns or university cities. Uh, we are very much in an experience economy more than, a, more than a product economy in many ways and people are looking for experience and turning down material things to have that experience. I think experience is really key so I absolutely endorse that. The other one that I wonder as well is how rapidly retailers are drawing in the omni-channel approach to retailing rather than keeping them as separate channels and uh, some are doing this better than others of course but mostly I feel people are I either go to a, a bricks and mortar place or I visit a clicks place. And, and some often they're not combined and the, the digital experience in store or on the high street may well be a differentiator as well for retail. Community of retailers need to do something in the community of retailers rather than individual retailers. And of course, retailers being salespeople tend to see competition as winning and, and the other person losing rather than how can we all work together to make the high street a more productive place with less betting shops and less mobile shops and more entertaining uh, entertainment and more products that we actually do want on high street a building an area a space that he has multiple outlets in to create an overall experience for the customer and i think that if retailers could be smarter and come together as a group of people um, and think of the town centre or the city centre as a space that they all need to be mindful of mm -hmm. and, and nurture, then perhaps it would be different. To make a big picture point on that, Kevin, I love to use the board to instigate new thinking. And what I, the connection I've made from what you said is I've put that we've navigated to like the marketing, the left hand side, like the way we come across is where people seem to be putting stuff, but actually, this is more of a partnering approach where I've described it, enabling approach, which explores probably the least visited place on the big picture board, which is partners and suppliers. Everywhere else attracts attention because it's close to the customer journey. But this is almost like what I might call back office of retailers, 
deciding that they're actually going to have a natter together to work out what collectively can do, which is why I've put it in the partner space. I really, I really love what Johnny was saying about culture, and I've seen good examples of that. But what I've also noticed is that, with the best intention, uh, culture is put, uh, it is, it's static sometimes, and it means that rather than it going to the community, the community is expected to go to it, and that means it's only a minority of people who actually take advantage of those opportunities. But when culture comes out and hits people in the face. <laughs> They really respond well. So I've seen that happen, um, or, or and I see that happen at things like festivals where there are cultural experiences available to you and you kind of tripping over them. And so it causes you to stop and to have an experience of that space that is different to what it is every day. I've also seen great experiences um, around belonging in communities. And I think belonging needs to be a really important consideration so my town is in a really deprived area and the high street is really depleted and there are some big brands but there are also a lot of independents and the point that Kevin was making about the need for some cooperation and collaboration I think is crucial because I do think they perhaps those people who set up those businesses um, do see themselves as competitors and not as collaborators and so they're not helping each other they're not um utilizing utilizing and leveraging the combined skills and experiences that they've got they're just struggling in isolation so i think that that's a big key and and this thing about belonging when our town has a parade because it is um remembrance day everybody everybody comes out doesn't matter what the weather is everyone gets into their military uniform and their club colors and whatever it is they represent and they march from one end of the town of the high street to the other to demonstrate that sense of belonging and i've seen it on gala days as well when everybody spends weeks getting the floats ready and then everybody parades down the street i've seen it on tram sunday which we have as well where that everyone in the local community comes out and takes part in that and and it causes people to be social and I think a reinvention of the high street has to include something that recreates that but almost like an everyday experience there'll be those special highlights during the year that bring people out but there it has to be something that that makes getting together being in that place more of an experience mm -hmm. um, so that people are drawn to it if you look at some of those trends that we identified, uh, you'll, you'll see that among them, are uh, number two was e-commerce marketplaces. In other words, not just a physical marketplace, but uh, creating maybe uh, uh, portals for, for everyone in the center of a particular town so that their e-commerce offerings are all on, on one platform. Uh, the, the one that's already been mentioned, uh, the pop-up shops, and in-store experiences, collaborative analytics. Everyone's collecting data, um, and there's some indication that if we, if the clothing people shared it with the food people, shared it with the motor people, there might be some uh, benefit. And then the move towards local e-commerce, where everyone is now being able to use the platforms that the Amazons and so on are doing, uh, and that gives them a, a greater strength than they had in the past. And then going on from some of the things that Bev mentioned, commissions, uh, discounts, and so on, um, and something that I think is going to be very big, if you look at the top right at approximate strategies, which is courtesy of uh, Richard Rumelt, uh, that's his terminology, uh, there, there's the mention of law, number five was launch your own local crypto or community stroke social token. Now, that's just an advance on the kind of thing that Bev's mentioned, where you persuade a group of retailers all to offer different discounts. And normally it's on a card or something like that. But now they're talking about a whole uh, cryptocurrency that uh, will enable all the people in a particular area to get together. So I think that's something that could be very powerful going forward. How can we overcome this financial situation in improving the lot of the high street? Sorry, I was busy doing something on the board then. Oh, bless you, sir. <laughs> it happens all the time. People are uh, on the board. They're doing so, totally sucked into the board. I've, I've heard that noise before. He's just got his 
your takeaway order in for this evening. No, he's off the board. Uh, well, I, I put it actually. What I did put down there, which uh, I don't know if anyone's kind of thought about, is the way that retailers measure their performance and perhaps how we as consumers measure retailers' performance might need to shift and change a little. So, you know, we we laud people like Facebook and Twitter and invest in Facebook and Twitter when they're not driving revenue and when they're not driving profit, in fact, they're driving huge losses. Perhaps in the digital shift uh, in recent times for retailers, we need to look at, well, what are the key measures and what's the key mo financial model? What's a different financial model, if you like, for, for retailers moving forward? Mm -hmm. and, and how do we how do we refinance that, as it were? How do we re, uh, restructure that financing within a retailer? Okay, so I, I think it is looking, it's linking into what Kevin was saying about um, new indicators of performance, because I try to shop locally, and then I'm disappointed by the customer experience, and, I, I, you know, people would return, there would be repeat business, footfall would go up if the customer experience improved, and it doesn't necessarily have to cost money to improve customer experience. Um, but that's even, it's some of the real basic stuff that people get wrong. I was stood outside a closed sandwich shop the other day and all around the front of the shop needed a damn good scrub. Yeah. That affects my customer experience. It affects Absolutely. my perception. So things like that, taking pride in the space that you have, um, doing your little bit and encouraging those either side of you to do their bit. Mm -hmm. It costs in time and cleaning resources, but it, it actually it raises the standard of everything um, so the experience then is oh I'm proud to be part of this high street and it's that sense of belonging so the human belonging that factor I think is really important because people will pay to belong I'm just thinking about two different high streets I have on my doorstep one where there's a real lack of pride and one where there is a greater sense of pride and it thrives more but it's still not doing everything it needs to do so it's doing some of the small things well you know, putting things off because you don't have the money is, you know, happens. But are, is there other ways of financing things? Now, I'm going back to this cultural thing because, you know, Hugh, that that's my kind of background. And yeah. um, I do believe that with culture comes can come funding. So there's various, you know, there's um, Arts England, you know, all those guys that can provide funding for projects. There's uh, European funding for cultural projects and collaborations, which I think I'm all about collaboration. I think that that's, I think collaboration will be the engine of the future. I think working together, which means that you can redu reduce your reliance on uh, your own resources. And when you can start to share resources together, I think that will offset some of the expense that you need to do these things. So rather than thinking, where do we get the money? Well, which is difficult. You can think, where can we save the money? How can we save the money mm -hmm. yet double the outcome? And I think collaboration and partnerships and community and culture with an eye to that, bringing people into the high street uh, as almost like a, a symptom of those things happening. It's almost like that the high street will grow and businesses will flourish because, because of that. Sure. Yeah, what can we do for each other as well? Yeah. What can we Complete. do with each other to reduce our spend? You know, Complete. it's greater than the sum of its parts mm -hmm. and cheaper than the sum of its parts. The fascinating thing about it has been the tremendous community that has built, and I posted some and Bev commented on it, Everybody has mobilized. I mean, first of all, we had to guard places. But beyond that, people have helped to clean up. People are now saying, how do we rebuild the shops that had no insurance and can't get capital? How can we as a community help? Uh, the farmers are giving produce away because they can't get it to the markets in some cases. And the, 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 the volunteer groups are giving those to some of the communities that everyone knows were part of the the, the attacks on, on, on infrastructure and so on. So uh, I think that issue of community that Bev has picked on, where you've got shared cultural values around particular events, uh, that's very powerful, but also a crisis uh, and recognizing that we're all in this together 
can also be a very powerful mobilizer. And the mm. question is, how do you tap into that and sustain it? Because obviously, once the crisis is over, everyone wants to get back to normal life. You have to find non-crisis events, like Bev mentioned, that you can build community around and then build your retail sector back around that, I think. I think we've seen demonstrated the power of multitasking whilst we're listening and working um, on the board. And there's such a lot of activity on the board, which I think is great. Austin, I don't know if you want to pull out one of your examples. I know you've been active on the board and there's always different ways people interact. Oh, there's too many, but um, I'll go Pick with one. this one. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll go with this one. Um, let's, stop, let's stop trying to save the high street and just get rid of it. We don't need it. Wow. If you just, uh, if, if you, and that's it, that's all we need to know. Thanks, Austin. And there's obviously nothing that more needs to be said on that. I, that's the kind of level Austin's working at. So that's the kind of conversation stopper and starter in a room that we would encourage and go with the floor with. It might be in big picture terms. Austin has sat on that thought in an organization and not had the chance to share it. So this might have been Austin's chance finally to get the loud hailer out and express a view to the organization. Finally, he gets a chance to share a thought. Whether that's palatable, correct or not, we think different perspectives and diversity of ideas are okay as long as they're worked through and there's some parameters and courtesy and professionalism set, but we would work through on that conversation. We just haven't got time to do it now. So thanks for that, Austin. The, the board's filled up lovely. We would use that, the connections. We would zoom in in different areas. If we were running this as a session, we would zoom in. We've covered a lot of the board, but predominantly an area of the board we don't often cover so quickly, which is partnership and collaboration and working with a community, with entertainment. And I love the idea that Johnny brought in about collaborating, not just because it's good, but because it opens up sources of funding almost on the supply chain, like there are different ways of getting money in. So as well as looking at the customer and extracting in a nice way, more revenue from that route, up the supply chain, up in supply is there, um, funding coming in from like culture and community. That's an interesting perspective as well that I really like. What we would go on and do, we haven't got time to do this now, but just to give you an insight, there are these two uh, up in the top right and corner in the digital delivery of Big Picture, which uh, we would do more in the, in the moment if we were in the room. One is to find out who is collaborating, who is active, who is working. Some people are more active than others. And it's just an interesting indicator. And this is the business end. If we were taking this conversation to a conclusion to turn it into an action plan or some form of what are we going to do with it, we would take a snapshot of this board. It would be like a bit like a holiday snap in that you would remember if you'd been part of that picture. Um, you would think about how you <coughs> felt, what you felt when you heard certain people say things, whether you agreed or disagreed. And because of that, we feel there's more ownership of it and you're more likely to turn it into some form of action if you were working within a team in an organization. <coughs> and what you would be able to do, and I can see people doing it, um, is we are moving up and down the opportunities, which you can all do. Uh, we're not going to facilitate this bit, but I call it a bun fight. Uh, please go in opportunities and push your opportunity to the top. That's one way of doing it. Clearly, in a meeting, we would probably give everyone a chance to do that. And I like to think about a king at the top that needs to be displaced. So we we'll look for a top three or top five. That then becomes a snapshot and turned into whatever the meeting outcomes are. So what we've done in the time, and we're going to finish promptly today, is we've demonstrated, I feel, a, 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 a really a, an interesting conversation of something that is topical, it is relevant. I come into these, you have to put on a certain 
um, openness and mindset. And I think there's a skill in the facilitation of that, this that Hugh has demonstrated today and our other partners do all the time, which is we put things out there as prompts. And Bev and I have talked in the past as chief practitioner, the ebbs and flows of conversations. There's a different speed to it and we shouldn't be uncomfortable at the beginning when it's a bit slow and people are finding their feet and there might be a silence. For me, that's when the magic happens, when symbols are connected, connections are made and people multitasking is all all right. We would develop this board. We'd probably tidy it up. We'd pull out some of the key themes. We might use a physical board like I've got behind me. And that would then become the essence of what we all think therefore we'd be on the same page we'd feel part of it and then we would take that action forward into whatever was the next uh, development for that business and organization